Welcome to Hispanic Biz Success Stories. We interview business owners who built successful businesses to learn from them, their history and how they built a business. Today we're very fortunate to have with us Mr. Frank Dominguez, the founder and president of Dominguez Sheet Metal Works, uh, who started business in 1960. Mr. Dominguez, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate your time and and, uh, <coughs> and sharing your story. <coughs> you were you were sharing a little bit uh, that when you were a young man, you started working in carpentry, yes. and you liked that. Uh, how long did you work as a carpenter? Probably uh, about two years, and I was fortunate enough, my uh, had a cousin that lived about two houses down, and he was a master carpenter. And, and one day he just invited me, because uh, I, I wasn't working at the time, and. He took me on. I didn't know anything about carpentry. I used to see my father mess around with the two, hmm. but in in no time I liked it. I enjoyed it, and in fact, uh, as time went on, he went to work with another contractor, and I was I did all the carpenter work with this really? other guy, till the, he called me, and we built quite a bit of houses and. Really? Upper Valley. Oh, okay, okay. And, and he had me full time. Really? I, mean, I said, you know, salary wise was good. Uh, but uh, I, like I said, I, I started seeing the sheet metal, and I don't know, for something, it just drew me in there. And, I, and then things at that time with the carpenter, the, the industry wasn't doing too good, so I took on the sheet metal. And so as you get into <coughs> the sheet metal and you buy, you buy a shop that you're working at. Right. And uh, by the time you bought it though, you had learned oh, oh yeah. how to manage. Uh, the people that, that own the shop, uh, the, the Jenkies, uh, did, they, did they teach you how to manage or? No, not really. <laughs> you, you learned that on your own? Yeah, uh -huh. because like I said, as, uh, uh, Mr. Jenke, the owner, he he died. He was passed on, and the son, he he wasn't really too interested in the sheet metal shop. So I ran the business. They asked me to run the business for the widow, and that went on for about a year and a half. I do payroll, I everything. You, know. you got in there and ran the business <laughs> yeah. without training. I mean, you just, <laughs> right. you, you just learned every piece. And. Uh, her CPA would come in once in a while and say, well, are we doing okay? He would ask her and say, yeah, everything's okay, don't worry about it. But then uh, they decided to move up to Albuquerque and said, well, that gave me the opportunity to keep the business by the shop. But I had to move out of it because of a zoning thing. But. Uh, they set a price on the on the business, and Mrs. Janky, the widow, cut it down in half, more than half. Really? So, so <coughs> I was to tell you what she cut it. Down. So, so she, so there was a price on the business, uh, but but you had expressed an interest, or they they asked you, right? Oh yes. Uh -huh. And so, so then the widow reduced the price because you were going to buy it. Because that, and she. It was not a uh, workers' relations. It was sort of a family thing. Cause I, after work, they would invite me to stay there for dinner and stuff like that. So you were like a family member yes, to them. Yes, I was. So you were so very loyal to them, and mm -hmm. and they felt the loyalty to you. So, so you were able to buy the business. Mm -hmm. Did you have to borrow to do that? No, monthly payments. <laughs> really? <laughs> they they worked it out for you with monthly payments. Wow. Yeah, and so so as you as you started going the business now you you had shared that you went after the uh, the growth in the in the garment industry right. in El Paso mm -hmm. and those were large factories. Right. So you focused on on industrial growth. Yes, but it, you you get in there and you still just one little job, isn't it? but pretty soon you were in there. Once you're in there, you start. Can you put ten air conditioners? Can you do this? Sure, 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 sure knowing that at the end of the month, you get your money. And I had good credit, so 
So you you put in ductwork and air conditioners and and uh, and then as as uh, as evaporative cooler is giving way to refrigeration. The refrigeration. Then you moved into that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and so were your were your children already working for you at that time? No, not really. My oldest at that time was a pharmaceutical rep, and the other one was in college. And my daughter was still in high school or something like that. So your your children went to college. Yes. And. Um, and, and your oldest was uh, pharmaceutical. Wow! Did, did, did he? And he was doing very good. What happened? I don't know. He just one day he says, oh, "I'd like to come work for you in the shop." So really? He said, "Well, maybe it's my chance to <laughs> start looking for a retirement or something." I, is that uh, is that Frank Jr.? Frank Jr. and he's still there, and Patrick is the middle one. Patrick does mostly all the uh, bookkeeping. Okay. Did he go to to college he too? He went to college, uh -huh. to, and he studied. Uh, uh, did he study accounting, or he just likes it? No, <laughs> just basics, I guess. Really? Like and before, but you learn it. You yeah. have to learn yeah. it. And your daughter? What did she went on to college too after high school? No, she graduated from Loreto, and then she came on with us. She had little jobs. She used to work with Jim Paul. Oh, okay, with the, with the, the baseball <laughs> thing all over. And with the El Paso Diablo. See, si. yeah. And eventually she ended up with us. And she, uh, she is sort of a collector. Go take this bill to so and so. And <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we have her running around. She collects your, your, your mm -hmm. receivables. Right. Uh -huh. So she knows your customers. Oh, yes, yes. And they know her. So. So she's kind of the face of your business right. out there. <laughs> and so, uh, so, so now your sons and your daughter are, are doing the business. Uh, what is your role um, there now? A little bit of everything, yes. Cause I, I like to look at the books once in a while and, and the estimating and go out in the shop. And so I'm an all around guy. Because I mean, you've got your your, your sons uh, and, and your daughter running the business, and you have your brother with you. How long mm -hmm. has your brother been working with you? Ooh. My brother used to work for the post office. No, eventually he started off of college. He went to teaching, and, but he couldn't take. <laughs> it was too. So then he got into the post office, and at that time. I, the business was getting too big for me, and he didn't—he wasn't too happy with the post office. So he says, "If you need help, I'll be glad." To. I said, "Well, you can come aboard, but we don't know what's going to happen." I said, "Nah." So he came with me, and we've been very lucky. He's helped me a lot. What? When did he start working with you? Probably around. Sixty-eight. He's been there quite a. So that's when your business really started to uh -huh. grow. Because I was able to go estimate. Because if you go estimate, sometimes you'd be gone probably all day. You know, or I'd make it a point to go see this. You know, and knowing that he was there, why there was a. So he'd manage the shop while you were out. So or so he would go out and not stay in. Stuff. But estimating seems to be critical in your business. Yes. That's where you make money you don't, right? <laughs> right. It's estimating. It's getting harder. It, in the old days, it wasn't. Because it's, how much do you think this is going to cost? Ah, oh, so much, OK. And if you stay within those lines, nobody, there's plenty of money around. I don't know. And now? No. <laughs> I mean, everybody's got to, you try and be as fair as you can with the customers, but. Uh, we have a lot of customers that just do it, do it, do it. Yeah, yeah that's good. Well, you've got a long-term relationship mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. So here you have your shop, and you opened your shop in uh, on Alameda Street, and that was in 1960, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. At uh, what, 3128, is that right? 3128 Alameda. Mm -hmm. So you've been a part and partial of that Alameda community. You grew up nearby on Finley, right by Bell School. Yeah. 
and just a few blocks away you have your shop. Right. And um, and so you've seen the community change because Alameda used to be a thoroughfare. Right. right, right. So that was Highway 80. <laughs> Highway 80. I remember if we'd go to Sleda, we'd go down Alameda, right, yeah. Texas. And uh, what 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 was that change like? Well, to start with, <coughs> at that time around say 4:35 o'clock in the afternoon, traffic would be you know. Because if you're going east, you had to go through Alameda. And I'd make it a point to s be out there in the sidewalk and cars start honking at me. Hey, Frank. Hey, Frank. So a lot of people <laughs> knew me that way. I remember, I remember um, a, a gentleman used to have a, a cart with a horse and he sell oh, fruit. Yeah. Was the name Lucas? Or Lucas. Lucas. And he always had a sign on his... He had a, a saying. He was a, yeah, a philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> you remember, Mr. Lucas? Oh right? yeah, uh -huh. yeah. He used to all the way. He would ride that horse all the way to uh, Isleta. Really? Wow. That was yeah. a. That was, he was a landmark himself. Yes, yes. So you've been a landmark there, and um, so you were, you were telling me that uh, you were able. You you did work for Mr. Mike Dip. Uh, I did a lot of work for him. He had a lot of property all over town. I know he started the gro in the grocery business, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so he got into real estate. And you're talking about Mike Dip Senior. Senior, yes. And so, so the building you have was he he had he had that building. He got it from Salome, the Salomas, and then he ended up with it. And I was in my little pool hole over there, sort of all cramped out, and I'd go on Alameda and I'd see for rent for sale, and I said, ah, one day I stop, and he was there. And he was talking to somebody else that wanted to rent the, the place. And for what I was playing at the, paying at the pool hall for what he was asking for rent, and I said, no, I can't make it. And I started walking away, and he called me, says, wait a minute, I'll talk to you. And then this gentleman, the other gentleman left and talked to me, and he says, if you've, if I, if you rent the building from me, what are you going to do? I says, well, I got a little sh sheet metal shop over there, and I begin to, to smoke from him. And he worked at us where the rent was very reasonable, and, and I remember that he says, I'm going to lease this for you for a year. And I said, I c for a year, I bring all my equipment which is pretty heavy in here and then next year you're going to come by and and say you know the rent's going I said no in a year you're going to buy this property from me I said, <laughs> I said yeah yeah okay a year went by and he was there in the morning with the papers signed here really but at that time there was three stores that he was getting rent from, and we figured it out with the rent, and what I had to pay him was only, I could only have to, I would only have to come up with about $150 a month and make the payment. Really? The rent was the rent money. Wow. And he gave me a lot of work, so, in fact, a lot of times I didn't even pay him the rent, because he, he's the one that owed me the money. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. It, so, so how many square feet do you have in your building now? Uh, probably about uh, twenty-five thousand. Wow, that's, yeah, that's with the yard and everything. So. And your sons now and your daughter run the business mm -hmm. for the most part. You over—they still come to you for final advice, right? Right. And yeah. final decisions. So, so you—you've really built a legacy. You've—you built a business. Your children are now able to operate oh, the they business. They can run that business. And they like it. Yes, uh, they like it. And you have confidence in them. Yes, yes, I do. So how did you do that? How did you raise your family so that you can pass the business on to them? There again, discipline. <laughs> no, they, they took a, they're hard workers. And so is my brother. My brother's been. So how did you teach your children to work hard? Just 
I don't know, it's just by... Did they work with you in the summers? Uh -huh, uh -huh. They, so they've always I, worked with you? Right. Uh -huh. they, so what, they knew what I expected of them. And, and you demanded of them just like right. you did everybody uh -huh. else? Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Did you treat your children different than other employees when they were working with you? Or? Not really. Not really. You made them work. In fact, I got a grandson over there right now. And I kept moving him this morning. Hey, <laughs> go, you know. That's that's the only way to do it. So you got to be on your toes, moving. Mm-hmm. And, and after a while, they they don't they yeah. don't have to be around. Yeah. Now, now, Mr. Dominguez, you're you're um, you know you 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 put in a, a full life. I mean, we're we're talking we're talking 50 years, 54 years in business. Uh, what's your future now? A little golf, <laughs> a little recreation, and travel. We, uh, we've traveled, my wife and I, we've traveled. But the people, the couples that we used to travel with, they're gone. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, you, you, you've had some uh, medical issues recently, right? I had open heart. Wow. About five months ago. Really? Was that scary? Well, you're under sedation. You don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> but but you're, rec you, but uh, but you've always been going to the gym too, right? Yes. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. you've always been in, 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 in. You've always worked out. I've got two replaceable knees. Really? From jogging over at Scarity every morning. You Seven have days. you have knee replacements too. Both. Both knees. And so does my brother. Really? But he was a marathoner. <laughs> yeah, and you run? I, I, used, I, had, I, I walk now, mm -hmm. but I used to run a lot. In fact, I got, I'm the one that got him running, because I really? used to run. Really? Wow. So, so what, what advice do you have for people who are growing? Because you've seen a lot of businesses not succeed. Mm. Well, <laughs> long hours and steady and if you tell a customer you're going to be there, you have to be there, you, you know, not mess around with, because better than advertisement is word of mouth, I think. Word of mouth. They know. We had a customer, a couple of older people who stopped by there yesterday. They want to refrigerate their house. They had t uh, three other estimates. And he says, look, here's, here's the estimates I got, says. So no, don't show them to me. We'll give you our estimate if you like it. And we went and estimated, and it says, you're not the lowest. You're but I, I've heard a lot about you, so you go ahead and do it. Really? And so, so you're, you're saying a couple of things that are, that are important for business, I think. One is you perform, mm -hmm. and, and word of mouth has been your best advertising right. mm -hmm. well word of mouth doesn't happen if you don't perform and do good mm -hmm. work and, right. and, and 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 you just insist on good good performance right right the uh, the contractors that uh, that I had at that time they're all gone they were good They'd call you and say, we're going to do this. Uh, you put in whatever you think you need. The house needs to be cooled or heat or whatever, like that. So you, yeah. all, you all became experts. Well, you're experts in sheet metal, mm -hmm. the ductwork. But then you became experts in refrigeration and, right. and air conditioning and heating, too. Like, heating. like right now, what is the big push in your business? What's the, the big heating. In the heating. Do but th we still do... Refrigeration in the middle of the winter. So we we do a lot of work for the hospitals. They're word of mouth. Too. We do a lot of stainless steel for the hospitals. Stainless steels, mm -hmm. like like uh, for work tables. In their, right in the cafeterias, and they're all they're under constant inspections all the time. So they have to be whatever it takes in. You know, so so you fabricate with stainless steel as well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and so your 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 children do they know the fabrication side as well? They know how to figure it, how to estimate it. 
because Saint still takes a special person. Yeah. But they know how to figure it, and it, they they can do it. So when you hire a person, what do you look for? Well, they they'll start telling me, "I work for here, I work for it. no, I don't care. <laughs> You're gonna work for for us." So get in there, and then we'll see what you know and what you do, and we'll take it from there. You know, Mr. Dominguez, it's really been fascinating for me to learn about about your business because I've known of you for a long time. Thank you, thank you. And, and, um, and you've been there, you've stayed there, and you've persisted. And, and uh, I keep wondering, well, why did, why, why, how did you persist? I mean, you're just a hardworking man, uh, but you built a good team around you. I think so, yes. Where did you learn that? I don't know. Just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's in me, I, I don't know. I, yeah. Like, I don't have to go to the shop anymore, but I, I'm the first one there. <laughs> Why? I want to see things start. And, you, know. you still have the hunger to yes, see? Uh, you, you, still, uh, you still enjoy that? Oh, yes, uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. It's not just a place to go, it's you mm -hmm. still enjoy that. I've broken a lot of golf uh, dates with my buddies. Hey, we're gonna play, and I can't go. Yeah, I, got, I got something to do. Ah, get out of there. <laughs> so so maybe you, next week. So, so you've got something to do. You've still got something to do. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's exciting. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and are your children the same? Do they pick up your characteristics? I believe so. I believe so. So you really built a, a, a legacy there. <clears throat> and, um, but let me ask you, you know, you've, you know, have you ever experienced a situation where you were concerned that maybe the business wasn't going to survive? Mm, yes. What yeah. was that like? Sleepless nights. Really? <laughs> a lot? Well, and then... Things start turning, you know, your way. And I do it a lot, a lot of praying. I go to church, and, and things start changing. So the sleepless nights comes because you don't have work. Work, and then maybe fi a little financial trouble, or we haven't been paid for this, or stuff like that. Uh, but then after a while, everything starts moving. So, you know, you've had to keep up with equipment and make major purchases, and, and <coughs> you've got a lot of vehicles, you've got... Too many. <laughs> yeah, and so, so how have you, financially, how have you been able to keep up with that? You've generated your own? Yeah, it's... It's... Uh, money just keeps... Not much, but just enough so we can survive. You know? And we don't ask for much. We don't go on big trips and stuff like that. We don't spend. We, we watch what we spend. So you're very careful and very cautious. Wow. We <coughs> have to <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. And, and so, so, so as you've spent your life building this business, um, what, um, what what is what is uh, come from that in your life? A lot of satisfaction. What does that mean? Well, I wish my father was around and he, he could tell you. Really. Because because what was your future when you were a young man? I was always looking for work. I was so I used to walk all the way to downtown and back on Texas Street looking for work. I, I wanted to do something. Did you want to build a business when you were a young man? I had no idea of what it was. It just came. Have you helped other people grow and grow their business? Mm. 
a little, yes. Uh -huh. If if I can, I will. Okay. Do young people come up to you and say, "How did you build your business? Help me or teach me?" Or yes, uh -huh. I'll take them on. And uh, as long as it's not competition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you you give them advice, like sure. like uh -huh. what kind of advice? Well, the the first thing is watch your pennies. So I, uh, I had a. An individual that Frank, I, uh, I want to start my business. Uh, can you give me a uh, talk to the bank or? Uh, then, okay, so I helped him. Then the bank calls me about three weeks. Hey, this friend of yours just put him a brand new car. <laughs> <laughs> so he borrows money from. He was going to buy equipment for this business. For the business, and he goes and buys yeah. a car. Yeah, it's definitely like so. That's so. What did you say <laughs> to that? <laughs> no more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No and more. and was he successful after all? Not really. No. Well, he he did he he got some good government jobs, but he'd finish and then psh, blow everything away. Blow the money. So your advice is not to blow your money. <laughs> That's right. Invest in your Keep business. Keep it under the mattress. <laughs> which, is what, which, which is what you've done. You've yes. invested in your business. Mm -hmm. Well, you've invested your, your life, uh, you, your family. You've raised your family in the business. You've invested in uh, staying with it and working with it and yes. giving, up, giving up time with your golf buddy so you could take <laughs> care of business. And, and uh, you've invested your whole life in building a business. I oh, have. Yeah. But the legacy is your family's been... Now, yeah. now working the business. So the transition is now they have the business. Right, right. And it's just a matter of you have a place that you go and you make sure things are done right. Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a satisfying life. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. But you've been a very much a part of this community, a very important part. As our community grows, it's it's the businesses uh, that hire good people for a long time that build families, and you've certainly done that. Uh, any any comment, uh, you know, from if we want to understand uh, your legacy in your life, uh, anything you'd like to leave us with? Any thought you'd like to leave us with? Well, uh, I've given or, or try to give the community as much as I, c I can or was able to. And if anybody wants to start a business. Stay with it, and you know. Don't there again, watch your pennies. That's the most important thing, and be truthful about what you're doing. So honesty is important. Honesty, uh, yes, sir. Honesty and integrity to your work. Uh, Those are really strong characteristics of good businesses: uh, integrity and honesty and perseverance. And we see that in mm -hmm. in, in your story and. We really, really appreciate your story, and we thank you, Mr. Dominguez, for taking time to share with us this beautiful story. And a legacy isn't built overnight, it's built over a lifetime. And you certainly have demonstrated that. And we thank you so much for taking time to share with us. Thank we you We thank much. the viewers for watching, and we really trust that you've enjoyed this show. Stay tuned for Hispanic Biz success stories. Thank you for watching. Good day. <laughs>